Hi there, ET370. Uh, this is our first online lecture. I uh, hope it goes well. Uh, what we're going to cover today is a review of the flip-flops that we went over last lecture. Uh, then we're going to introduce this new concept called an edge-triggered flip-flop. Okay, uh, we'll talk about uh, ed, uh, edge trigger flip flop with preset and clear, just like we did in the review. Uh, and then we'll go into this thing called a shift register, which allows the computers to kind of pass data sequentially in series. Um, and then finally, we'll go through a bunch of examples that are actually related to your homework. Um, and a cool one is actually a uh, doubling or frequency uh, half. Uh, kind of circuit and or having kind of circuit which is kind of nice uh, your homework 13 is going to be due along with your homework 14 on Tuesday through 24 uh, for homework 14 it's going to be just problem 7.45 and I ha already have a bright space um, uh, assignment where you can upload a PDF or a picture of your homework so that way you can turn it in online all right well let's begin um, so a quick review um, the SR flip-flop, and we'll look at a simulation, had this very simple truth table. It just had uh, a set and a reset, and then you had the outputs Q and Q bar. And if you recall, if you had the set and reset set to zero, there's a memory aspect where Q and Q bar, or the inverse of Q, is just whatever it was previously. If you hold the set button down, the Q is high. If you hold the reset button down, the Q bar is high. And then we don't allow one one because it erases memory. So if we go over here to the simulation, we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna switch over and share my screen. Okay. So you should be able to now see uh, this was our one bit memory or SR flip flop circuit and you have a set and reset. Right now the set is, uh, it's in the memory mode, zero, zero. And if I click the set, it shouldn't do anything. The Q is still high, but once I hit the reset over here, I should drop the Q down to zero, which it does. And if I continuously press that, uh, we get Q bar high and Q low. Okay, so set over here and reset over here, okay? Um, we went through a bunch of different examples. We went, well, what if we want to have a, add a clock? And so we have a clock signal here, and we had two AND gates. And if you recall for an AND gate, what happens? We have uh, a signal that if it's one here at the clock, then the AND gate essentially passes through the signal. But if it's zero, the AND gate actually negates or makes the output zero. And so the, when the clock is one, this circuit behaves like the original SR flip-flop. But when it's zero, it doesn't pass anything and you have basically a zero, zero or the memory aspect, the QN minus one, the Q bar N minus one. You can see here, here's a clock pulsing through and only when it's one is set pass. Now I can do this set this down to zero, and then I hit the reset. If I hit the reset when the, um, when the clock is low, it's not going to do anything. It's not until this clock tri triggers that you get that um, forward pass of the data. Okay, so the next one we looked at was this data flip-flop, where this data line was essentially tied to the set and the reset was tied to the inverse of the set with this uh, inverter circuit. Okay, it's the same thing with the AND and the clock signal. And so this just guarantees that the set and reset are different values. Okay, and again, if I have this low and I see that the output is low, so the data is low and the output is low, what's going on is that the clock only push allows this data to get pushed forward when the clock goes high. So right now the clock is low, the clock is high, the clock goes low again. I turn this high, I don't see an output change until the clock goes high, as just, you just saw, okay? And so this is a uh, D or data flip-flop circuit. And we can go back and look at the truth table. So if I hit stop share here, we should be able to see the truth table below where if the data is zero, that's like saying the set is zero, all right, zeros, um, and the clock is low, it doesn't matter. You still get the memory. If the data is high, again, it doesn't matter if the clock is low, you get the previous. It's only when the clock is enabled as one, then the, the set makes Q high when it's one, and when the data is low, the Q bar is, is one, and the Q is low, okay? So these are the two kind of main truth tables for non-edge triggered systems. Now, 
if I go back here, if I go to the share screen and I share the simulation again, we did have another uh, version where we added the preset and clear. And the preset and clear, remember we have this, uh, this or. And let's recall what an or does. For an or, if the other input is low, this signal gets passed through whatever it is. But if this signal is high up here, then what the uh, output of the or has is a guaranteed high, okay? And so right now we have data is high, output is high, and these two preset and clears are low. It's, it's as if it's just the original clocked uh, data flip-flop, okay? But if I set, for example, clear is high, doesn't matter what any of this is, it's gonna set it high, okay? And you can see that here. Here I can preset, I can preset the output as high, or I can preset the out of the Q bar as high using the clear, okay? So pretty straightforward. You can refer to the notes to confirm. All right, so let's go and start this new stuff. All right, so I'm gonna hit stop share and we'll go back to the screen. So let's look at what's going on here. This is our new edge triggered flip-flop, okay? And the key point here is that it changes the output cue on the rising edge of the clock. It's kind of like the uh, interrupts that we talked about, right? It only cared about the rising edge, not the absolute value like in the previous cases. So let's look at what a simple input output block looks like. So you still have data, that's like your set, right? And it's the inverse of the reset. And you have a clock, but notice this little carrot. This is our edge signal here. And we still have the output Q and Q bar. And the key thing that I want you to remember that'll make this whole thing easier is that Q equals the data when the clock rises. That's the key. Q equals the data when the clock rises. So here's a clock. You can go up, down, up and down. Remember, this is rising, this is rising, this is falling, this is falling. So only in these instances does Q equal to the data, right? And so what does the truth table look like for that? Okay, so the truth table looks something like this. When the clock and data are any combination, it doesn't matter. Q, is, Q and Q bar are just their previous values. It's just holding into that holding pattern. It's only when the clock rises, and what we're gonna use is this little, this is new, this is this up arrow symbol to show that the rising edge is what we care about. And so when this rising edge occurs, then the Q becomes the, the data, right? And you can see that here. So hopefully this truth table confirms what I just said here, Q becomes the data when the clock rises, okay? So when that rises, then this information is passed through. All right, so let's look at um, a circuit, and I, the circuit is gonna be a little bit more complicated than, um, than what we're doing in the previous uh, logic gates with the inverted NORs and all that stuff, but don't mind that. Um, just look at the overall function. So let's go here. So, yep, like I said, a little bit of insanity a little insanity going on, but you have a data line coming in, you have a clock line that's going up and down, you, see that you can see this clock line down here. This uh, Q is still over here and Q bar is here. So let's look at this data. I can make the data go up and down, right? But it's not until this Q, or this clock rises, does Q become the data. So you notice here in this window, Let's look what happened. There was an instant time where actually the data was high and then Q became the data. But look, when the data became zero at the next rising edge, then Q became whatever the data was. All right, let's do this again. So I'm gonna hold this now. I'm gonna hold it high. And you see the Q in the plot. There we go. Finally, it turns high once the clock rises. Now I'll let go, Q is zero. We gotta wait until this rising edge and finally, Q drops back down to zero, okay? And so again, I'll repeat it, Q becomes the data only when the clock rises. So right now I can go up and down and up and down and up and down. Nothing happens until this rises, right? So now if I hold it high, okay, and you can see that I happen to hold it high right at the time where the clock was rising, 
If I release it here, nothing happens to Q until, again, we get that rise, okay? So that is the fundamentals of an edge-triggered data flip-flop, okay? So let's go to the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share. So the next one we have is an edge trigger data flip-flop with clear. Okay, and at any point, if I'm going a little too fast, pause the video, uh, re-watch it, and hopefully you'll uh, get a better understanding. Okay. So the edge triggered flip-flop with clear is kind of like the, the, the non-edge triggered with clear and, and preset, right? You still have this uh, uh, edge trigger clock and clock. You still have a data line. You have a Q and Q bar. And like before, that clear just allows you to clear out the, the Q. Okay. And so the truth table looks a little crazy. Let's see what's going on here. A little crazy. When the clear is zero, okay, you're in your holder pa holding pattern. In fact, when the clear is zero, it doesn't change the behavior from this to this. You actually have the same behavior between these two. Okay, um, again, you have the edge triggered and you have when the edge happens, data, Q becomes the data, yep, good. When the clear is one, I think you can imagine what happens, it doesn't matter what the clock and data line are, you've essentially shut off Q, you've, you've cleared it out. Okay, and so that's it, it's a very simple concept. You could introduce a, a preset too. The preset would be the same thing, if the preset is high, then Q is one, right? So same idea, okay? All right, so let's look, let's look at a circuit simulation of the edge triggered with preset and clear. So I'm going to go back to um, the next simulation. Okay, so let's go here, and here it is. All right, so it's just a single edge triggered uh, flip-flop. So here's your data line, here's your clock that's going up and down. And here's your preset and clear. Right now I have this clear set as high. So no matter what the data line is, doesn't care, doesn't matter what the clock and data line is, the Q is low, right? Because that clear bit is high. Okay, and you guys can see that. I can hold this low, I can hold this high. Doesn't matter, you can see that this Q is not changing. Okay, now once this goes down to low, now it's just following the previous example where Q becomes whatever the data line when the clock rises. So Q right now is low because the data line is low. Once I set the data line to high, I gotta wait for the clock to rise there. There we go, now the clock goes high, okay? If I set it low, this doesn't become low until the clock rises, okay? And then wait for it, boom, there we go, okay? It's not too bad. Not too bad, all right. Um, normally I'd say, is there any questions now, but since uh, you guys are all behind your screens, uh, enjoying this via YouTube, uh, I guess we'll have to do it over Zoom or in the comments, all right. Okay, so what else do we have here? So let's go back to uh, the doc cam, so stop share. Okay, this new, now we're, we're, we're talking, now we're talking about this new thing called a shift register. Okay, so we have the shift register here. And the concept for a shift register is serial in, parallel out, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cascade a bunch of these edge trigger data flip-flops. So what does that look like? It looks like this guy, okay? I know it looks a little bit scary, but it's not that bad. And right now I've only drawn four. Sometimes they have eight in a row, right? Zero, one, two, three, and you could have eight to make up an entire byte. But you have a serial input here and you have a clock and notice they have the edge. And this clock is all in parallel, so this clock rises up and down, up and down. All right, so what is going on? Let's try to visualize it, visualize it in our heads first before we go into the plots and the truth tables and all that stuff. Okay, if this data is low and this clock rises, remember Q becomes whatever data was. This Q becomes whatever this data was. This Q becomes whatever this data was and this Q becomes whatever that data was. Okay, so in this case, if this is zero, the clock rises, nothing really changes. But let's say the start at one. If I do a clock rise and drop, remember on the rising edge, this now becomes one, but because this used to be zero, this stays zero, right? And so on and so forth. If I do that rise again and I hold this as one, 
this is going to be one and this is going to be one and this will be zero, zero. So it's going to push this data information serially and you, in parallel out, you could actually see that if this was LEDs or bits, something like that. Okay. Okay. And then, um, Yep, this is just repeating what I just said. Every time the clock cycles, the data is pushed down the line. All right. So let's look at a plot of what that might look like. Um, and so that when we see the simulation, it won't be so bad. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see that. All right. So I have my clock signal, just a standard clock signal. Okay. That's this guy here. Good. And let's say I gave you an arbitrary data signal. Okay, so it just happened to be like this. We could have picked anything, but it just happened to be this. And notice these blue lines or these dashed lines here are the rising edge. This is when all the information is passed through. This is when Q becomes D or this Q becomes that D because everything is tied in parallel. Okay, notice at this instant in time, Q is high. Right? Same with this one. Here Q is low. Here Q is high. Okay. Let's just look at this one first. When this edge rises, when this edge rises, Q0 becomes D0. You can see that here. Q0 becomes D0. No problem. Right? Now let's look at the next edge. So we're not even worried about these other shift, reg shift registers or edge triggered flip flops. We're only worried about this one. On the next edge, click, click right then oh the data is still high so q still stays high on the next edge the data happened to be low so now q0 actually drops down to zero and you i think you guys at this point get the pattern if the data happens to be high when the clock rises the output is high when the data happens to be low when the clock rises the output is low okay and you can see that this pattern follows through okay no problem but now let's look at what happens. Because this Q0 is the data for the next edge, we can follow the pattern. So let's look at this. On this edge, because this edge is also controlling the second one, when this edge happens, this data one was zero, so this Q1 stays zero. Okay, now let's go to the next edge. On the next edge, this data one, this data one here is now one. So now this new Q1 becomes one on this edge and you can see that rise. On this edge here, the data here is one. So the new Q1 becomes one. And then over here on this edge, what do we see? We see that we have a zero here. So this goes zero. Do you see how this shifted? You see the shift here, right? And if we follow the pattern, you can see this identical shift. If you go to the next line, that's this one here, okay? This third one, again, we're looking at this clock. And what do we notice? Zero, good. Zero, good. One, good. One, good. Zero, one. And again, you can see why we call it a shift register right? Because we're just shifting it down every time there's a clock pulse. So I hope this makes sense. Um, and then we can see if this, uh, and then again, the final Q3, it's the same thing. Everything is shifted down with the clock. So let's go over to the simulation and see if this uh, um, behavior is confirmed. So I'm going to go back to the share. Okay. And uh, let's see, let's go here. Oops. Let me get this thing out of my way. Okay, here we go. All right. So now we have a cascade of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. All right. These are LEDs with, with resistors to ground. And so here are a bunch of edge triggered flip flops. And when the clock is high, again, Q of each one becomes whatever the data one was. So you can see this clock line. Now watch this. I'm going to hold this high. And then when the clock occurs, I'm going to bring it low. Watch how this high bit gets propagated and, sh and shifted all the way down. OK. 
Okay. This is a way for computers to fill up registers, right? So let's say you have a register of data of eight bits or one byte, and you want to fill all the registers with values. Well, you can serial in, populate all eight, and then you can use that eight bits as storing memory, right? So this is how you get serial in parallel out. Okay, let me hold it for two clock cycles. Okay, so there's one clock cycle. There's two, and now I can release. And you can see this two high bits gets propagated all the way down this uh, chain. So hope you, hopefully you find that kind of neat, kind of interesting, right? Okay, so we'll let that play a little bit. Okay, so now let's go back and look at some examples. Okay, so here's an example. This is right out of your homework, right? So hopefully I'm making your homework lives a little bit easier. So this is uh, kind of a interesting abstract problem. I don't know if there's any functional uh, reason why to make this example other than just to kind of lock in the concepts. Um, but what do we have here? We have a clock that controls all the, these little edge triggered flip flops in parallel. We have a data line that's connected to this and, and we have Q1 and Q2 coming from the outputs here. Okay. And what they're saying is initially Q0 is one. So this is actually one here and this starts at zero, right? And then they say this starts at zero. So zero, one, zero, zero. Okay, all right, and the clock, again, this is a rising edge clock, right? Or sorry, not a rising edge clock, this is a clock like this where the rising edge is what matters, all right? And let's draw out, I think uh, we wanna figure out what does the table look like for all these um, outputs with time? So what we can do is just fill in what the original value is or the initial value. So we have D0, we have Q0, which is equal to D1. Uh, we have Q1, which is equal to D2. And we have Q2, but we also know D0 here is the output of the AND from Q1 and Q2. Okay, so right now we've, get, we've been given this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is zero. Okay, let's say we have a clock pulse right here. Let's try to predict what happens. So this is one. So what happens? Q1 would become one and, and uh, Q0 would become zero because this was zero. So your clock pulse happens, it becomes zero, but this becomes one. If this was zero, then this stays zero. Okay, so we should see that propagate, right? Okay, D0 pushes it through, yep, zero. This becomes one, zero, good. Okay, then we gotta wait all the way to the next rising edge. On the next rising edge, Okay, and by the way, I forgot to mention, if we have a one here and a zero, what's D zero? Well, if we and a one and zero, we still stay zero. So it's not like this changed over here, okay? So if we get to the next one, again, this is zero, so we propagate a zero. This is zero, we propagate a zero. Now this becomes one. And so one is zero and it becomes zero and we get zero. So this is a little bit of a boring but simple circuit. Once the, the data becomes zero, it never repopulates again and you just get zeros propagating through. Simple problem, but just to kind of get these uh, concepts burned in. And if we go to the simulation, we can see it's, it's, it is this pretty simple. So share screen, circuit here. All right, so let's go to the next one. Okay. All right, so you can see that everything is low. Notice my first one here, I actually have a set version, not a reset version, so I can set this Q as high, right? Remember that was the initial condition. So we have, we're gonna make this one, zero, zero, and then that zero. I have my AND gate here. Okay, so I'm gonna set this high. Okay, so now it's high, and we're gonna see how this propagates. And what we should see is every clock cycle, this one bit goes to here, right? So we got the next clock cycle, there it is. Okay, again, that's still zero from the and. Okay, at the next clock cycle, this one bit should go now to that, that final one. 
Okay, let's wait for it. Good, and it does. Good, and still zero, one, and it becomes zero. And we can see that after this last one, everything should zero out, and then forever it'll be zero. Okay, and so you can see this propagation, one, one, and then everything's gone. And at this point, you can run this all day, and nothing's going to change. Okay, very simple example, but let's go into something a little bit more complicated. All right, so let's go back to the doc cam. Oh, this looks a little scarier. All right. So now this is the edge triggered flip-flop with clears. And let's look at the weird, interesting configuration. And it's not always going to be the case, but still we have the clocks all tied in to the same uh, input. We have the data line uh, tied to high. So this is always high in this example. Not always going to be the case, but in this example it is. And you can see, okay, Q0 goes to D1, Q1 goes to D2, so on and so forth. But look at this, Q3 goes to all the clear. So what does that mean? If Q3 ever becomes high, it's going to erase everything, just knock it out. Okay? All right. So let's follow what would this look like, right? Um, and let's recall our truth table, right? So we're going to write down all the uh, kind of known information, Q0, all their, they're starting at zero. That's fine. Um, VN is a square wave. That's fine. We want to sketch VN and Q0 three, three at a time. Okay. What does one of these look like? Well, if the clear is zero, it's just a normal edge triggered flip-flop. If the clear is one, it doesn't matter what it is. Q is zero. Okay, so let's look at what the, tr the uh, plot will be. Okay, so we put that on the side. Okay, so we have this clock up and down. That's the VN here. Okay, good. Now, on the first edge, remember D0 is a fixed five volts, so it's always one, always high. Okay, that's easy. And on that first edge, Q0 becomes whatever D0 was. Okay. Now, good thing Q3 is initially zero, so these clears are all zero, so it's just behaving normally. So on this first edge, let's see what happens. On this first edge, Q0 becomes whatever D0 was, and it was high in this case. Good. Okay. And Q1 becomes whatever this one was, so it's low. Low, low, low. Okay. Very good. Then we go to the next one, the next clock cycle. So on that rising edge here, right, boom, boom. Now everything, all the data gets pushed down, okay? And so we see, well, D0 was still one, so this is one, but Q1 becomes one. I think you kind of know what's gonna happen. Once Q3 goes to one, we got, you know, we're gonna get some erasure. Um, so one, one here, zero, zero, good. Next clock pulse, boom, boom. One, 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 zero. And finally, when we get that last clock pulse here, we're gonna get one, 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 and Q3 is gonna go one just for a little sliver of time, but because it's attached to all the clears, bang, knocks everything out to zero, and we start the whole cycle over again, right? So you can see this kind of pattern going, and then it goes to zero, and we can see again this pattern going, and then zero again, okay? All right, again, rewind the video, watch it over, see if that, make sure that makes sense to you. But let's go and check out the simulation attached to that. So I'm gonna go over here, uh, share screen again. Okay, let's go to the next one here. Okay, so we have again our resets. All the resets here are tied to that last Q3, okay? And what we have is um, that same pattern. This is always high. The clock is pulsing connected to everything. And you can see it goes high, 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 and then clears out. And see that little sliver right here on Q3, that final Q3. Once it goes high, bang, knocks everything out. And so you get that same pattern where Q0 stays high the, almost the entire time. And then the next one is a little bit less, a little bit less. Finally, get a very little sliver, and then everything knocks out. Not too bad, not too bad, okay. All right, let's go to the, um, is this the last example? This might be the last example. 
Okay, so the last example is this one. This is a kind of a cool example, but it's, it's a little bit of a brain trip. What this is going to do is it's going to take the frequency of the input clock here and slow it down by half. And then it's going to slow it down by half again. It's kind of neat. Okay. All right. So let's be very careful about all the interconnections. This is a tricky one. Notice the first thing is the clock here is not attached to the second clock. Hmm. Notice the data here is attached to its own inverse. That's weird. And notice that this inverse is attached to the next clock and the data here is attached to its inverse. Hmm. Kind of a weird situation, right? So we're gonna have to take some time to figure this out. Okay, so VN is still a square wave, right? The initial states will say that this is Q0 and Q1 are initially zero. Well, if Q0 and Q1 are initially zero, what does that mean for Q0 bar and Q1 bar? Well, they're initially high. Yep, okay. And we know that C1, <coughs> D0, and Q1 bar are all interconnected, they're the same, right? Okay, and so we, I just wrote that information, and D1 equals Q1 bar, and like I just said, D0 and D1 are the inverse of zero, which is one. Good. Okay, so let's look at the behavior of what's going on. Okay, so we have this circuit, or sorry, this circuit, and we have this plot of the clock. This is Vn here, going up and down, up and down, up and down, okay? All right, so we have D0, which we know was one, right? Because this was zero, so the initially that means this is one and so is D1, this was one. Okay, so let's make sure all that is put down correctly. Okay, good. D1 is one, D0 is one, Q0 is initially zero, Q1 is initially zero, good. And on the first edge, we know the game. If this edge, we gotta be very careful, this edge occurs, Q0 becomes whatever D0 was. So Q0 jumps to one, very good. But look what happens, Q0, we gotta be very careful about this, Q0 becomes one, but because D0 is also the inverse, immediately D0 drops to zero. So it's kind of like this double sequence going on. Q0 becomes one, but then D0 drops to zero, right? Okay, think about that one for a minute. Clock happens, Q0 becomes whatever D0 was, and then because D0 is tied to Q0 bar, D0 drops to, to the opposite of what this is, which is zero. Hmm, all right. Okay, we can keep, propagate, keep, keep on propagating that through. Don't even worry about this one. Let's go to the next edge. So now D0 is zero, the clock occurs, boom, boom. And so now Q0 becomes zero, and because D0 is tied to the inverse, it pops up to one. No problem. So you can kind of see this like flip-flop effect, right? Okay, and then you can see this pattern propagate. So here, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, so on and so forth, okay? Not too bad, right? Let's look at the next one. Now notice the clock of the second one is tied to this channel. So this actually is the clock of the next one, right? And so what do we care about? The rising edge. We care about this rising edge, here, 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 and here. Notice the frequency of the rising edge for this one is slower by half than the frequency of this original rising edge. So then we can play the same game. If this clock rises, this clock rises, what happens? We get Q1 becoming whatever D1 was. So Q1 becomes whatever D1 was. So we get a one and a one, right? But because Q1 is the, uh, sorry, D1 is the inverse of Q1, because of this interconnection, it drops to zero. So we get that same kind of flip-flop behavior, but notice the period, notice the frequency, right? You get a slowing down, right? So look, you have this tick here, double, and then double again, right? So this is a, a way for a computer to change different timers and frequencies so you can slow things down. Kind of neat, okay? All right, 
Well, let's go look at the simulation and see if this is confirmed. So we're going to go hit share screen again. Go to here. And here it is. We have the two edge triggered flip flops with a weird interconnection where uh, Q1, uh, Q0 bars attached to the clock of the next one and also the data of itself. And then you have the data of the next one attached to its own inverse. And if we look at the, the plots of the O-scope, you can see the original clock is this first line. And you can see that the Q and Q uh, of the first two, they get slowed down sequentially, right? So this should match what we just went through. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all the time I got. That's all the material I got for today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like and subscribe. Um, I actually can say like and subscribe. I, uh, I love it. And so uh, I, I hope you guys stay safe uh, with all the situation going on. And uh, yeah, I'll try to have a Zoom office hours where you guys can ask questions. All right, take care. Um, and uh, yeah, bye.